I love my homies, and if you're against them, you're against me. So right. just continue to stay out the way, man. That's the best thing I can tell you. Continue to stay out the way like y'all been doing. And they know who I'm talking to. Right, dog. Oh, man. And with all this, okay, this, this is going to do. Either y'all going to be sinners, or we going to serve y'all every day. Welcome back to Ask Wiggins TV. You already know it's your host worldwide. Wiggins, and I'm back. Oh, man. I tripped over another, you feel me, historical interview, man. When you talk about legends again, man. When you talk about Inglewood legends, man. You know, you talk about Don Moves, man. That really paved the way, man. Center Park is really underrated, man. And it's tr they trying to write him out the the history book, man. Especially you feel me when you got uh, they got they they often get confused with Centinella Park and um, you know other you know hoods that they get confused with, man. So today, man, this is my honor and a pleasure, man, to introduce you feel me an OG, man, a reputable man, OG Spud. For the one and only Inglewood Center Park Bloods. How you feeling, homie? Hey, man, I'm all right, man. I'm blessed. Oh, right. uh, man, I can see that, man. I appreciate you, you know, you feel me, giving me the, the sit-down, man, you know, the, the, the honor to do this interview, man. Uh, I was just going to say it's an honor for you to let me be on your platform. Oh, yeah, man. Thank you, man. All right, man. Uh, so how did OG Spud get familiar? With the Center Park Bloods. All right, quickest version. I was raised. I was born in Detroit. My mother brought me out here at seven four. I lived on Hundred Eleventh Street in Yukon. We stayed over there five years. Then I moved to Hundred Eighth Street within the boundaries. So I've been there, I've been at Center Park Elementary School, starting off from kindergarten to the sixth. Tomorrow I rode the morning side. Only two streets I ever stayed in the hood of Centers, Hundred Eleven, Hundred Eight. All right. Yeah, long time. Now, who originated the center parks, and you know what? How did how did how did they come about? Can you give us the history? You could take some time yeah. on that. No, no problem. I mean, we origin we originally we are the second oldest gang in Inglewood, blood gang in Inglewood, next to the Inglewood family. We were originally Inglewood family in 1976, 75, 76. My two OG homeboys, Big Spaghetti and Big Taco, rest in peace, started to tell all the homies that we we going we got the approval from the from the F troop families to branch off into our own to be center park boys. Okay. All right. And at this time, were they Inglewood families or were they still the chain gang? No, 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 no. The Inglewood, the, the Inglewood families had already branched from the chain gang in the, in the early 70s, in the, in the mid-70s, I think. I don't, don't quote me on that. But they were, the Inglewood family had already been established. But we was families in the center, in the center boundaries. We were, all, we were all Inglewood families. And then we broke off in the center park, but it was CPB, IFG, or nothing. That's what, we, that's what I came up under. All right. Now, you just said something interesting. You was already the CPB. Now, was the CPFB like the center? Never. Never. No, no. no. We were Ingle. No, I'm sorry. I, I should explain that. Was the, the, the center park, the, the Centinella Park family bloods around at this time? No. All right. All right. They hadn't came out yet. All right, for sure. And we were never CTF. We were Inglewood families, period. And when we branched off from the families, we became Center Park boys. 
All right. And we would say Center Park boys, Inglewood family or nothing. <laughs> that's right, that's right. All right. Now, no incrimination. You know, I don't, uh, don't, please, you know, I don't ask incriminating stuff. You know, if it's too much, it's too much. We can't talk about it, but. Check it, you check know, it out. I know how to give an interview. All, all right. <laughs> all right, for sure. <laughs> I dig it. Now you you know uh, they 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 want they want me to ask you, man. Uh, how did the beef between y'all and the weirdo gangster bloods begin? Okay, now I'm explaining to you the best way I can. That didn't happen on my watch. I was in federal prison when it happened. Uh-huh. But when I when they first started was in '93. When Big Wad from Christian Mafia, rest in peace, and Bolo from Bonnie Hunter, look, that they call a Little Stretch, and Booger, Sugar Booger from Weirdos, started that little click on the Hunter Left place. And it was like about five or six of them, which I wasn't tripping. But I, I'm on TV now doing my thing out of town. So I tell my homies when I come in town, I get into it with Bolo at a club. I said, man, what think you, what make you think you be coming in my hood and start a set? I can't go to, to Nicholson's store and start no set, so you need to go and get that handled, huh? And then all my homeboys thought I was drunk and stopped me, tell them, no, bro, we cool with them. I'm like, okay. So the next day, I called all the homies, guests, and said, man, don't y'all ever get at me about nothing when I'm trying to get to the set. You can't share no hood. Sooner or later, it's going to be a problem. Just like it was with the Dime Block boys on 110, we handled that. Just like it was the hooker boys on our chin, we knocked that out. Period. And I told them. And they like, no, they cool, they the homes. I'm like, all right, like, man, you out of town, we out here. I said, okay, I'm going to let y'all have that. But remember my words. And then, while I was gone, whatever happened transpired, and I ended up losing one of my down little homes. And that's how it started. I don't, I can't tell you how that can start, because I wasn't here. I've heard stories, but I don't even want to. Right. Say them because I, I don't know if it's accurate or not because I'm hearing it from my homies and they emotional and being they feeling so they might put a little extra on it or whatever so I can't tell you that. I dig it, man, and I appreciate you, you know sharing that with us for sure. Right. Now, uh, hypothetically speaking, man, because uh, as you know, I did the interview with the with the um, with the weirdos, shout to Rod, man, and. Uh, is it possible, man, that one day, because, uh, you know, behind the scenes, man, you know, quiet is kept, you know, it's still a few little um, sc- uh, scrimmages, man. Is it, would I be able, you know, to facilitate, you know, a, a, a piece, you know? It ain't got to be recorded online, but, you know, a, 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 a piece, uh, a meeting between y'all, like maybe a center park or a weirdo. Or we y'all have a conversation, you know, maybe cooler heads prevail. No. <laughs> all right. All right. All right. For sure. And I'm i if it was up to me, I I could be one to, to be bring it to the table, but it's too much emotion involved now. It's too much. And it's too much dis- blatant disrespect for them to be able to, be, they can never be trusted for just for the disrespect they've done. It is just, it's too much. And my, and my little ones, they ain't trying to hear it. Oh yeah, for sure. Yeah, I heard that, for sure. Now, on, on a more positive note, I heard you had a hand, you know, in the 1990 truce, 1992 truce between yeah, LA yeah, gangs. Yeah. Yeah, t- can you tell us more about that? <laughs> that was a really, really, to be honest, that was an accident. <laughs> we had just, <laughs> me and my little homie had just, just got back in town. I mean, literally that morning, we had just got back in town from out of town. We got a bunch of money. We up at the hair barbershop getting our hair cut, and they tell us that the water gates and some more crypts is in the hood for a peace treaty. And we like, what? A peace treaty? 
And we strapped, we going up there to cause ruckus. Oh, boy. I mean, we got pistols. They took pictures of us and everything. And I got pistols on my way, man, looking at some of my enemies from Watergate like, you already know. I was coming up there on the bullshit. <laughs> and he ended up having news. People were asking me interviews next year. I'm in the spotlight. They come picking me up, taking me to, taking me to, uh, Bevis Burbank Studios for CBS. <laughs> Oh, man. For wow. real. <laughs> so that was an accident. But it was fun, and I got to meet a lot of Crips, and we shared a lot of talking and positive. But like I told him, if it, don't, if it don't happen now, it ain't going to happen. That's one of my main quotes from the interviews from that. If it don't happen now, it ain't going to never happen. And it happened, and it stopped, and just like I thought, it'll never happen. Wow, that's cool. That's cool. So, so how long did that... You know, whether it was an accident or not, how long did the 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 the, the, the cease? Well, here's a two part question: Did did the did the um did the truce was the truce like between y'all and all the cribs like IVC uh, maybe Mask actually came later IVC Roman Huntings and all that was it between y'all and all the cribs of the area one and two? How long did it last? For one. It it never stopped. It was just what just wasn't tripping. But Bogart from Ten Dudes Raymond made it quick and clear. Y'all think it's peace and you would if you want to. So a lot of the world wasn't even with that. It just really was just like okay, we can talk about it, but it ain't gonna happen. So nah. Oh uh, wow. All right. And then as far as Eagle would watch, now the Watch Boys, they did their thing with they Watch Up thing for a long time. You know, I heard they still pushing some of that to this day, but in Eaglewood, nah. All right. <laughs> for sure. As far as you know, because I know you, you, you went down, we're going to talk about that in a second, man. But uh, have y'all ever had any other little scrimmages with any other Don Moves in Eaglewood? Yeah. Yeah, we had we had an incident with the Crenshaw Mafia that was briefly, but it was taken care of real quick. And then we had an incident with the Angola families. And that, but that in time, we, you know, got it right. Got it right. All right, for sure. That's what's up. Now, I'm familiar with Looney Tone, and I respect, you know, he legendary, you know what I'm saying, in his own right, his music from way back, you know, he put on for Inglewood, you know, he kind of put Inglewood on the map. I'm assuming that he's from Center Park, because a lot of people tell me that. So, is there any other rappers from Center Park that we may not know about? Well, my homeboy, uh, F-Bone, he been in the music, he did some songs on that flame and tape back in the days. He's he's real serious about the music right now, but he's more behind the scenes with the producing. But he used to have crazy flow. And then I got another young homie, Bad Actors, that I think he's doing his thing with the music too. Other than that, that's about it, Chop, to my knowledge. All right, for sure. Now, you know it's a lot of haters and trolls and whatever you call them on the internet, man. You know, they like to say Center Parks is extinct. And I even did an episode called These Hoods is Not Extinct. And I, I the first episode, I put uh, Center Parks on there. And I, I showed the flicks with y'all at the um, funeral for the uh, the dead homie. You know, what you got to say to um, the, the people that, that try to, you know, paint a picture and write y'all out the history of Inglewood, man? Right, right. Now I, I seen you. I seen your thing, and I appreciate you for putting that on there. But I'm, I'm gonna give it to you like this from a uh, logistical standpoint. Right. right now, not, not even just. I'm not even gonna go nowhere. I'm just gonna say right now, and you can ask this question to several people that you ask them down the line when you do interviews about they set. Ask them, do they live in their neighborhood? <laughs> the majority the majority oh, the majority boy. and I'm saying this and if I'm wrong then you correct me down the line but I, know what you're I feel saying. this in my heart because I see it 
the majority of every hood is full of Mexicans. Then that's true. So, for people who think we don't exist, okay, man, you, you, you go through your, ain't nobody over with Mexicans. Ain't nobody hanging out over there. But that don't mean they go. Right. You know what I mean? It don't mean they go. I can make a call and have 50 centers at my door within an hour. And they don't even realize that we that active, that we our numbers is like that. All youngsters, all with the BS. So <laughs> just because you ain't there, don't mean we ain't there. And I and I, I know I want to just allude to this real quick before I forget to it's very important. We've been running them boundaries from 113th, from Prairie to Crenshaw, all the way to 106. Between where 107 stops in Yukon, 106 stops in Yukon, 108 to 113, go all the way through from Prairie to Crenshaw. Them been our boundaries for over 40 years, man. I'm 54 years old, man. I've been from the set since I was nine. I'm, I'm sending you a picture with my 12 year old picture showing you where my mindset was in, in 1982. Wow. So for somebody to say that. They run the 11 to the 7 since 89. That is a flat-out lie. Because, homie, I started going out of town in 1991 to go do my thing. But before that, I was fresh out of Hawaii in 1989. And I was on the BS all the time. If they would have even tried that when I was on, they wouldn't have never been able to expand because I done went over there with my crew, which was wrecking crews, and went over and said, okay, this is what going to do. Either y'all going to be sinners, or we're going to serve y'all every day. Every day we see, we're going to beat you up, we're going to beat you up, and if you still try to stand down, then it's going to go to something else. <laughs> and I guarantee you, on my watch, that would have never been expanded because they tried to with, with the other two sets that I alluded to to try to do that. And we knocked that down immediately. So on my watch, 1989, he said 1989, and I'm quoting this dude, Rod, whatever. From 1989, they ran from 11 to 7. Man, on my grandson, that's a lie. Straight up. You're going to speak about your history, speak about your history. You started in 93. Right after that banging on wax came out, Big Wine, Boogie, and Boulder started you. Period. Not no 1989. Ain't none of you dudes went to Center Park Elementary, Worthing Elementary, Milo Junior High. Some of them, your mother went to Morningside because you're not. Asked, I really want to ask that dude this, and I'm going to end it with this. Ask that dude, how old is his oldest homeboy? 1989, his oldest homeboy couldn't have been no more than 14. So you mean to tell me that I'm going to let some 14 year old come push a line and start a set in my neighborhood when my name is known through the youth at that time, through the juveniles, the youth authority, and the streets about being about my business? So that is a flat out lie, Rod Dog or Rod whatever. Uh, and I'm done with that. I'm sorry, but that's my most emotion you're going to get out of me because that bothered me to my core. So I've been there. I'm a second generation to the port boy. I've been there. I'm uh, done with that. Uh, now, you, you mentioned something earlier, man. Uh, 106th Street to, you know, 113th. Now, Correct. There, there's another hood of a different race that's set up shop somewhere on 106th Street. And you know what I'm talking about, man. How did, man, yeah. how was it, man? Uh, how did that start, man? Again, that was not on my watch. I was in Fredo <laughs> Prison. I don't know how that happened. And now that it happened, it's become, a, it's become a problem, a real problem. Not just for the centers, but everything on that side. Centers, Crenshaw, Montana Avenue. That become a problem. Right. Do you believe one day, man, and, and this is very far-fetched, that we going to end up, you know, having to say, hey, man, you know, I don't like you or you don't like me, but 
Hey, bro. We can't let them come over here and do this, bro. I'm trying to oh, say it as li- I'm trying to say this as lightly as possible, you know, so you understand what I'm saying without, you know, saying the wrong thing for you to strike me out. But All right. I understand exactly what you're saying. It's already like that, though. Oh, all right. For sure. I didn't know that. For, the, for all seven of the Inglewood, Inglewood sets. Now, you, all right. So, hey, you, you just said seven. Now, to right. my understanding, it was eight. So I, no, it's only seven, homie. I see. I'm scared to so, ask you to name them, so we just go move. I'm gonna I'm I'm name them for you anyway. Oh, on the south God. side, on our side, it's Prince Your Mafia, Center Park Boys, and Avenue Piru. Going with going um north, the Inglewood Fannies, Center the Park Fannies, Queen Street, and NHP. Period. All right. Let's. Uh, and it's this. I don't know this YouTube dude. Who had the seven? He had it, the seven sets Inglewood, and he named those exact seven. And I started laughing because he knew he knew what he was, because that's the original. Okay, for sure, man. Uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna ask you about some other hoods, you know, that was around, and uh, you let me know if you remember or not. So, what about the 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 Doty Block Bloods and the Doty Block Cribs? There's never been no Doty Box Plus. They was always Doty Avenue Crips. And they all eventually turned Raymond Avenue Crips. Oh, all right. All right. For sure. And the um uh, uh the one ten uh Don Block Hooker, shout out to S Man. That's the ones we 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 nipped that in the bud real quick. Oh, the ones right. I was talking to earlier, the dime block hookers. Oh, all right, all right. Yeah, we, we stopped that immediately, mid-80s, 85, 86. Okay. So did, did y'all ever interact with, like, I'm not sure if they existed at the time, but uh, maybe the Hardthon gangs, like, you know, 11 A's and 11 A's gangs. Hard time. No, no, hard the hard time games. No, the hard like in, in Hardcore, the, um, uh, you Bob know, Pyrus? No, no, the 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 the, the, the Crips though, the um, like the, the the Thug families and the Eleven Nation. I don't know nothing about that. I don't know nothing about none of that. All that all that came out after I left. This mad ass city gangster Crip and all that. The only ones, the Crips in our section who we got out with the most was the IBCs, the Watergates, and the Rangers and the Tongans. And the legends. Spud, you you ain't playing no games. So you get straight. No, I'm giving you the history and I'm giving you facts. Can't nobody contest nothing I'm telling you right now. Not honestly. So when you so when you came home, right? When you when you finally came home for that bid, man, uh, you know, what what was it like, man? Assuming you came home in the two thousands, man, like did you was it gentrified? But what was the biggest change that you noticed, man? Well, I mean, basically, you know, when I when I came home, I, I I didn't come straight back out here. I had no plans to come to California. I came back out here for hood day and ended up getting paralyzed. So I wasn't out here, but I've always kept a finger on my pulse, on the pulse of the hood, always will. And it was just different. Like I say, everybody moved out the hood. Dang, every block was a majority of Mexicans. Damn, every store you go to is ran by Mexicans. When I grew up, everything was black. Everything was black. When you go to McDonald's and Burger King and Taco Bell and Broly Hut, it's black. Now you're going, oh, this is it's Mexican. And I am not by far, please let me put this out to any Mexican leader. I'm not a racist. Right. I'm just saying what happened and what right. it is. Right, right. And as far as Inglewood, sir, Inglewood just turned commercial, man. They got this so far and then right. they, man, now they got the Kimball Stadium coming. They trying to clean up anything worth anything negative because the mayor ain't trying to miss out on all this money Inglewood is generating. Right. For sure. Well, yeah, man. Man, you know what's fun, man? Uh, 
It's gonna be a part two, man. They gonna have to bring you back, man. But uh, unfortunately, we ran out of time, man. I appreciate you, man. Any last words before we get up out of here, man? Last word, man. I'm not pushing nothing negative. That's not my thing. I'm an author. I'm a national bestselling author. I have 17 books out. One, my 18th book coming out this year. You can hit me up and look at my work on www.clippersfordjohnson.com. But at the same time, I'm a center park boy, born and through. I got five generations of homies up under me. I love my homies, and if you're against them, you're against me. So right. just continue to stay out the way, man. That's the best thing I can tell you. Continue to stay out the way like y'all been doing, and everything will be all right. <laughs> and they know who I'm talking to. Wild dog. We, all right, man. We out of here. S Wiggins TV. OG Spud. One love, baby. One, <laughs> one love, homie. We out of here.